to take approximately 45 minutes, as we know that your time is valuable. Once we have completed, we will open it up to a short Q&A section, so please hold your questions until then, or if you wish, you can simply type them in on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will address them after the presentation. If you notice about three-quarters way down on your GoToMeeting box, there is a small section for chat. Simply type your question in there. John Brabel and Mark Stillman are the co-founders of Energy Edge, a management services firm which provides a broad range of services to both energy marketers, as well as the companies that provide their products and services to the industry. They are both students of the energy industry who continually study the changing dynamics of this exciting marketplace to help position their clients for the future. Both John and Mark have broad energy industry backgrounds, as well as professional expertise in areas such as finance, business and product development, strategic planning, turnaround work for at-risk organizations, business funding and recapitalization, and executive management. In 2011, at the encouragement of several heating oil dealers, a separate, standalone software business was launched. Today, the Energy Engine offers a proprietary turnkey e-commerce and behavioral marketing solution geared towards the heating oil and propane dealer community. Through these webinars, John and Mark hope to share some of the changes and challenges they see for our industry, stimulate a meaningful dialogue concerning these changes, and sometimes even challenge the conventional thinking of the industry. Presenting today's webinar is John Grable. John? Hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Adrian, and, uh, and good morning, everyone. And I also apologize for the technical difficulties that we have this morning. We never quite had that, uh, that occurrence uh, take place. So um, what we'll try and do is uh, certainly move through the webinar this morning at a, um, at a good pace, sharing information with you that, uh, that can help you as the screen that you can see in front of you says, uh, stop some of the pain that we feel um, in the fuel business. Here's, here's the agenda that we're going to use today. Um, we're, going to, we're going to look at, at, at a number of things in terms of you know, solving these problems and whether or not you're running a, um, uh, the, the uh, heating oil business or a propane business or, or maybe a downstream commercial fuels business um, to a certain extent or one extent or another. Um, all of these problems um, apply. Decreasing gallons, aggressive competition losing customers to other competitors, maybe other fuels, other energy sources. Um, if you're in a business that uh, extends credit, you've got accounts receivable that probably you're talking with a financial manager about on an almost daily basis. Even if you're not extending credit, you're dealing with things like bad checks that really are accounts receivable for you. Um, reducing your delivery costs. The single largest um, expense in typically any downstream operation is the operations of the fleet. And how can you reduce those delivery costs and some of the simple things that you can actually do to accomplish that. And, and overall increasing the margins at the same time. And uh, we work with a lot of a lot of different companies and you know some people will look at us kind of kind of funny and, and uh, say hey that's that's kind of impossible. Uh, to do all things. Well, it, it really isn't. And uh, what today's webinar is designed to do is to share with you some things that, uh, that others are doing and uh, how they're, in fact, solving these problems. And uh, as Adrian kind of alluded to as part of the, uh, the introduction, um, a lot of it really has to do with, um, uh, with doing business online and using, doing some of the things, more importantly, that cause customers want you to do and engaging with them the way that, that uh, they, they want to engage, be engaged with. This particular webinar actually goes beyond the 45 minutes that we allocate for this, so we're going to kind of skip by some of these pages. But after the webinar is over, um, you know, Adrian will be in touch with each one of you. And uh, certainly if you'd like a, a copy of this to, uh, to see what some of the slides say that, uh, that, that we just don't have time uh, for in this 45-minute session, we'll gladly provide you with a copy of that uh, of the webinar. But you know, you can look at the headline here. Remember when selling fuel used to be fun, when the business was growing, when customers were calling you and saying, would you come service me? Well, times have changed. And consequently, you know, what we need to do changed. But what happened? Why aren't those customers calling? Why are the gallons decreasing? Well, quite honestly, it's a natural occurrence in any business because every business has a business life cycle. Um, you have that period of time where the business is growing. I mean, this was this is actually coming. Well, oh, went too fast there. This is actually coming up on just about a hundred years ago now when this industry. Oh, I'm supposed to be using a highlighter here. Let me try and do that. There we go. 
when this industry was really growing and and um, and uh, heating oil was replacing largely coal in some cases firewood as a uh, as a primary heat source and we we we've uh, we've seen the industry experience this growth and uh, certainly all the benefits uh, you know that come with it. Uh, but any business goes through these life cycles. It's not anything that's unique to heating oil um, or propane. Um, but if we look at heating oil, and this is actually this is actually distillate uh, gallons delivered in the Northeast to residential customers um, over about a 12-year period, you can kind of see where this trend is going. Without a doubt, we know that heating oil gallons um, are in decline. Um, Matter of fact, if you're in the propane business, or in some cases maybe thinking about getting into the propane business, as so many uh, fuel dealers um, are doing in the Northeast, uh, you should also understand the dynamics of propane as well, because propane gallons are actually um, also declining. Uh, 2002, there were 12 billion gallons of propane done. 2013, fast forward 11 years, and it's now down to 11 billion gallons. During that same period of time, here's something kind of interesting. Margins have actually doubled um, over that same period of time. The key point there, I mean, if you're an operator, you know, double margin sounds good. But propane is less competitive than ever. And um, because, uh, obviously, you need to be able to support those margins with higher prices. Um, uh, so propane is less competitive than ever. Uh, we, we see consumers revolting against uh, propane in certain areas. Uh, if they have an opportunity to go to natural gas, they'll switch off of propane faster than they actually will off of um, off the heating oil. So just one of the things that um, uh, many people really don't understand, they think propane is, is growing. And there actually are some segments of the company or seg segments of the country where propane is, in fact, increasing in, um, in volume. Um, here in the Northeast is, is not one of those. One of the things that is happening, though, here in the Northeast is we have more propane dealers. Um, so you have um, you have more people competing for these declining gallons. We also are seeing more customer-owned tanks. Uh, certainly here in the Northeast, uh, other areas of the country, uh, customer-owned tanks are more the rule than they are the exception. But we're seeing the increase of customer-owned tanks here in the Northeast, and that certainly is having a, uh, a change in terms of of um, of how um, people are in fact reacting to propane. Um, and certainly, if any of you have any questions, we can talk more about that. One of the things that Adrian mentioned, um, you know, as we go through this this webinar this morning, is use your go-to meeting panel on the right side of your screen and down in the bottom. Um, you know, just uh, pen any questions because we're going to cover a lot of information, and uh, Adrian will, will field those uh, those questions during the course of the webinar, and uh, then we'll we'll stay on the line as long as we need to afterwards to uh, to respond to those questions. So um, you know what are what are your options as far as as you get to, to this particular point in this life cycle if we overlay you know what we saw on that heating oil graph you know it really says you know we're in the decline phase of the of the business life cycle. Um, so in the decline phase you know what do you do? You know, what are some of the options? Certainly one of the things you need to do when, when you, even in the maturity phase, is you need to optimize your business. You need to run it as efficiently as you possibly can. And I know all of you um, do that, but we'll show some things uh, today also that um, maybe I'll have you think about things just a little bit uh, differently in terms of how you can maybe optimize more than you already have. We certainly know that there are companies that uh, are exiting the business. Um, I had a conversation with uh, one of our clients who gave me a call, one of our energy engine clients gave me a call um, earlier this week. And um, he's, he's a heating oil only dealer. Well, not heating oil only. He actually has a couple of convenience stores. But he uh, does not do propane, does some commercial fuels. But he's primarily a heating oil business. He's acquired four heating oil companies in the course of the last year. And you know, so is he exiting? Absolutely not. What he is, in fact, doing is is consolidating some of the business around him, so that he, in fact, can be more efficient in terms of his delivery density, certainly, and uh, some of the other advantages that he can do by doing that. But certainly, another option is those those four companies that he acquired. The people that own those companies made a decision to exit the business. 
Um, so certainly exit's a viable option. Go out of business. Hey, if you you know you run out of customers, you run out of volume. Eventually, that's going to happen. And there's some people that uh, that are not in the business this season that have been in the past. Um, many companies, of course, we're seeing diversify, adding other products and services to their portfolio. Certainly, a very viable option. If you think about um, many of the companies that are still in the uh, in the heating oil business or the propane business today, their heritage may go back to coal, and certainly they diversified. You know what they're going through now again, generations later, is really no different than their uh, probably great grandparents did uh, when they uh, when they started offering heating oil in addition to the coal deliveries that they were doing. The other thing, and one of the things we're going to talk about today. And one of the options is how to extend this life cycle. How, in fact, do you do that? So you can see we can go into the decline phase, but this is something that many companies um, uh, in, in multiple industries will, in fact, attempt to do. It's typically what is done is how do you extend that life cycle? Um, how do you get more customers into the, big, into the business? Um, you know what kind of new approaches um, are available, or maybe there are different pricing strategies, or maybe you're serving different market segments, or you're employing different channels to be able to serve those market segments. All of those are are strategies that can be used to, in fact, extend. And if you notice what happens here, when you extend, you can, in fact, grow that business. And uh, and that can in fact uh, be done in heating oil because we're seeing companies do it um, uh, as we speak. What we're the samples that we're going to share with you today and the examples are really using e-commerce to it to in fact to do exactly that to extend that product that that life cycle that business cycle by doing uh, employing some of those strategies employing different channels. Um, using technology and the internet now, in term in, instead of face to face or the phone as we we've, we've done uh, in the past, serving new market segments certainly is being done. Um, some of the clients that we have or others that have gotten into the online world are full service businesses, which have traditionally uh, you know wanted to service the full service market, but they realize now that there is this other, it's actually better than 50% of the market out there that buys, as we've historically called it, on a COD or a will call basis. Um, we call it on demand uh, when we're talking about it in the online world because we're, we're not uh, taking any cash on delivery um, and customers not calling for delivery um, if they're engaging with us on the, on the internet, but they are making their purchase and determining when they're going to get fuel from you on an on-demand basis. That's a big, big segment. And we're now seeing many of the full service companies wanting to go into that segment because they're extending into a different part of the market to, to sustain or to, in many cases, grow their, their gallons by extending into that market. Using different pricing strategies. Um, you know, and certainly using the internet as a channel to get to customers presents some very intriguing opportunities for pricing strategies and for you to 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 manage your pricing different by by easily uh, providing uh, pricing zones by by using volume pricing very easily to encourage customers to order a little bit more so that they save a little bit more and you deliver a little bit more which, as you'll see in a few slides, has a tremendous impact for you in terms of your delivery cost. If done properly, using e-commerce will also reduce your expenses. Matter of fact, we can share with you the detailed information that will say that it's somewhere between about 9.5 cents and as high as maybe about 12.5 cents. So we just use 10 cents a gallon as a placeholder. Very realistically, selling fuel online using a fully automated um, platform and a fuel, full, fully automated system will, in fact, take 10 cents of cost out of your normal fulfillment cost if you're engaging with a customer by phone. So uh, uh, a huge savings. Just think if you could reduce your oil cost today. Think if you could reduce your cost of oil today, 10 cents a gallon compared to your competitors.
but that gives you some opportunities. That's really, you know, what we're saying here is you can actually reduce your costs by 10 cents a gallon. You can also improve your your efficiency um, by delivering more gallons and actually delivering faster to a customer using the technology to be able to enable you to to do that. And also. Um, one of the things that many of our clients have found, particularly if they are full service customers or full service companies, is their full service customers have been exiting the business and they found that now they have the ability to save those customers when those customers have considered exiting the business while also acquiring new customers that they have never served before. So you have a dual impact in terms of your customer solving a customer attrition problem as well as growing your business with new customers. And you know, just in terms of, 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 of full disclosure, as Adrian um, opened this up, we do, um, you know, we want to part, part of our business is uh, providing the industry with the energy engine, which is a uh, complete automated uh, full service uh, e-commerce business system that helps companies do it right and engage with that. But beyond that, we've got 14 years worth of experience actually doing it uh, ourselves for about nine out of those 14 years. And we also serve other clients who are in the online business um, who are not using our energy engine as well. So we've got, a, we've got a, a significant amount of experience in terms of doing business online. And, um, and that's part of what we're sharing with you today. One of the other things that's changed is how the customer um, interacts with us. You know, the customer is 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 really in control. Uh, the internet has really changed a lot of that over the last um, now about uh, 20 years uh, that people have been online. They now have much more information, much more knowledge, much more information that uh, that they can use to educate themselves, which really has shifted the balance of control over to the customer. Um, so the customer, uh, the customer really is in control. The customer is going to find the products and services that they are most interested in. So the, the secret, part of the secret here for our businesses is, well, okay, how do we just adapt and give the customer what the customer wants, right? I mean, the customer is out there. Somebody's willing to buy from us at a, at a, at a margin that we can make um, uh, money at. And um, uh, you know, and we can do it safely and ethically. Why would we not service the customer? That's one of the things that we think about in terms of this business equation: is adapting our business to do what it is that the customer is looking for. Um, I've always been fond of this this Sam Walton uh, quote. You know, the founder of of Walmart. You know, there is only one boss, and it's the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company simply by spending his money elsewhere. And if you relate that to our industry, we've seen customers do that. We've seen customers go off of full service. We've seen customers um, go off of heating oil or go off of propane and go to another fuel. We see people, uh, if the price gets uh, goes up, we see an increased usage of wood pellets or firewood. We see people um, willingly go to, uh, to natural gas if natural gas is available in that area. So part of the thing, the customer is voting customers voting every day in terms of how they're going to secure that energy, part of the opportunity for us is recognize that that customer's changed and then change our business to suit the needs of the customer. And that's one of the opportunities that we also have with the customer when they're doing business with us online. They are, in fact, more fickle. And, you know, we've seen, um, and, you know, not only in this industry, this is not unique to us, monumental changes in buying patterns. Um, you know, and as we say here, you know, home heating oil is not special. It's happening in all industries, and actually many industries are much further ahead than we are in, uh, in fuels. Self-determination. The customer is going to decide what they want to buy, when they want to buy it, how they want to buy it. They're going to determine that because all that information is available at their fingertips in these devices that virtually all of us carry with us every day. They want to do business on their terms. And, and, and certainly integrating um, appropriate e-commerce capability into your business 
allows that customer to do business with you in the way that they want to and also on their own terms. I'm going to go ahead and skip by this uh, slide because uh, there's really a lot of meat here. But really what it's talking about is engagement and interaction. The customer wants to be involved with us. That's what they're doing on their smartphones is they're actually looking, they're, they're shopping, um, and you know, and many, many in the industry still have websites that we used to kind of affectionately refer to as brochureware. It's kind of your brochure online. That's okay. It provides information. But the customer really wants to be able to interact with you. That's where the expectations of the customer are today. We could talk more about that. And again, if you're interested, we'll be glad to do that. And this is kind of a continuation of that slide and drills down on that. So if you have any questions on that, um, you know, either talk with us after the, uh, after the webinar or uh, shoot your question over to Adrian. All right. So I don't want to depress everybody on this, uh, on this webinar. Uh, because there certainly is um, it's good news in this industry, and it certainly is a very vibrant industry that is going to continue for long after um, Adrian and I are, 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 are pushing up daisies, as they say. This industry isn't going away anytime soon. So how do we stop some of this pain, um, knowing, recognizing you know, what phase of the business life cycle we're in? How do we do some of this? So employing different channels. And the channel that we're specifically talking about today is the internet as a channel. Um, I'm not going to go over these percentages, but what you should know and your takeaway should, from this is really this last point. Being online and engaging with customers online is really universal. Essentially, everyone is online. Certainly, the people that you want to do business with are online in one way or another share with you just to kind of give you a sense of what that means in terms of our industry. And these are real life um, examples. These actually are from last heating season. So it's the 13-14 heating season. And this is, this is benchmarking data from our network of energy engine clients um, over the course of that, uh, that heating season where, where the average client had visits from 12,000 people that visited their site. That's the average. The high was up to about 50,000 uh, visitors that, that, looked at the, uh, that looked at their site, came to them to, to check out what it was that they were offering. Uh, the average client actually acquired just shy of 600 new customers during that season. And, you know, again, the uh, uh, the averages are, in fact, the averages um, on the high end. We had clients that were acquiring 2,500 customers during the course of a heating season. Significant, significant numbers. Um, at the same time, while they're acquiring customers, they're also capturing very, very useful information um, about customers. Again, if you're using the right kind of a system to be able to do this, um, you know, think of it. Think of the telephone call that might come to your office. There's somebody that's, uh, that's thinking about uh, maybe becoming a customer of yours gives you a call you know, to learn about your business. And they get an answer to their question, and, uh, and they hang up. And, and the conversation's over. Um, what if you were able to go back to that customer, um, and you were able to, to get a message back to them and say, hey, thanks for, thanks for giving us a call. We'd really like to have you as one of our customers. Um, maybe you want to you know, give them a, you know, a first order incentive or, or, or uh, um, entice them or remarket to them to come back to the business. You really can't do that well in the, in the phone world, uh, interacting with a customer. In the online world, it's actually quite easy. Um, uh, if, 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 if done properly. Um, the, our clients captured, um, the average client captured 2,815 email addresses of people that came and said, I'd like to know more about what it is that you are selling. Um, on the high end, it was 8,000, so just a, a, a pretty uh, significant number of, uh, of email addresses. 
And when those email addresses are captured, even if they were not part of this 600 that actually signed up, gave you their tank information, their billing address, their delivery address, their contact information, even if they didn't take uh, uh, go that step, so they're still really prospects, they've checked you out, but they haven't decided that they're going to sign up. You now have the ability, if you know their email address, and in the right system, if you also capture the zip code that they were checking on for maybe it was, uh, do you provide service in, in my town, or what's your price today in my town, because I'm thinking about placing an order. Um, and, they, and if they're checking the price, they have to check a price for a specific fuel. If you're a propane and heating oil dealer, both, they, maybe they selected heating oil because that's what they use. Somebody else selected propane to check their pricing. But you know how to contact them, you know where they live, and you know what fuel they use. Just imagine, I mean, especially those of you that have been in the industry for a good number of years, how valuable customer lists have been and how we protected those customer lists as being very valuable information that was extremely confidential for the company. Now you have the ability to go out and you have 2,815 people that you know how to communicate with them at virtually no cost very quickly and make a, a, another offer to them for them to become a customer. Extremely, extremely valuable and useful data for you. One of the other performance benchmarks is, is, um, is gallons, gallons per drop. The industry average is 139. Uh, our dealer network as a whole is 168, um, uh, and, and that number has actually come down a little bit over the last few years as more and more dealers offer um, minimum 100-gallon deliveries rather than the traditional 150, still much higher than the industry as a whole. And, and our highest dealer actually uh, had an average drop size of 207.5 gallons. When, when Adrian and I were running um, uh, businesses before we launched Energy Edge back beginning in about 2000, year after year after year with our online customers, we averaged 204 gallons per drop size. Um, we'll show you some information in just a, a few minutes, just what the impact of that drop size is as far as your profitability. So we talked about channels. Let's talk about a little bit about serving new markets, the on-demand segment of the market, what we've historically called will call or COD is greater than 50% of all the gallons that are being purchased out there. Um, but will call and COD is, is changing, um, and, 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 uh, and, and there are more people that are just deciding they want to be in control. They want to know, they want to determine when they're going to get a delivery. They want to know when that truck's um, showing up. In some cases, maybe it's a budget situation. They want to make a determination when they're when that delivery is going to be made. They want to buy 150 gallons or maybe even 100 gallons instead of 200 gallons. They want to have those choices. They want to be served. Remember that self-determination that we had just a few slides ago. Um, many customers have stopped thinking, and we should also stop thinking, that full service really matters to many consumers today. It does for many of them, and they're going to continue to buy um, at full service because that's what's important to them. They, they, they value that premium service. They're willing to pay for that premium service. But today's consumer wants that self-determination. So some of them are going to self-determine that they want full service. Others are going to determine that they want on demand. It doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're necessarily price shoppers. Far from it. They, it's really Matter of fact, it's not all about price, and we've, we've found that out over the years in doing business online. People come, it's more about the convenience, the engagement, and the interactivity. And if you do that well, uh, you don't have to be the lowest price in the market, far from it. All right, I mentioned to you um, about saving 10 cents a gallon, and uh, this is some of the detail. We're not going to go through this. Um, entirely on this cost on this side though we do have some increased costs it does cost you more for some things when you do business online one of the notable things is your credit card processing um, because you're running uh, typically if you take our recommendations you're going to run hundred percent of your sales either through credit cards or debit cards or some sort of other guaranteed electronic payment method 
Um, and that's going to cost you about four cents more a gallon. Um, you're also going to have some modest data entry uh, expense that you wouldn't otherwise have. But over on this side, you have a variety of different things that um, reduce your, your drop size. Average drop size, if you can increase that, if you can get up to that 168 or 192 or 207, uh, we have a chart here uh, in a slide or two that will show you just what that savings translates to in dollars and cents, somewhere between um, at 3.7 cents or 6 cents. So you can see you already got your credit card expense back just from your drop size. If you're already in the COD or will call business, if you're doing business online, you have no bad checks, zero. No, no re-deliveries, no bad debt because you have no bad checks that you need to chase or collect on. You wind up, your drivers wind up making the deliveries like automatics. They, they don't have to make sure that somebody's home uh, to make that delivery or to pick up a check that was supposed to be under the mat or in the mailbox or stuck in the door or wherever they're, they're, uh, they're, they're leaving checks and doing that sort of thing. Your driver delivers like automatics, pulls up, connects, um, uh, makes the delivery, leaves the meter ticket, and he's on to the next one. So your drivers are actually able to make more deliveries uh, to customers when, within a certain period of time. And then you also have reduced customer care. So the difference between these savings here and that added cost there gives us that 10 cents that we talk about. And it is, it is very, very real. And we're actually seeing some companies actually exceeding those savings. But I talked, I talked about the impact of drop size. So here's the industry average, like I mentioned, 139. Okay, and the industry says that the delivery cost on that um, 139 gallons actually breaks down to about 20 cents a gallon. It's somewhere around 27, 28 dollars to make an average delivery in the in the industry. That covers the cost of the the truck, the maintenance of the truck, the fuel for the truck, the cost of your driver, and insurance and so forth associated with that. So if if that's your cost, 20 cents a gallon. At 27, 28 bucks a delivery. Okay, now you increase that delivery size to 168. You now have a, and if you do that division, now instead of paying 20 cents a gallon to make that delivery, you're now paying only 16 and a half cents to make that delivery. Because that driver, uh, I mean, you know what you're, what you're, what you're, uh, what you're pumping at. Um, you know, it, uh, it can be 60, 70, maybe as high as 80 gallons a minute. Um, you know, filling that tank to to add that uh, that extra thirty or twenty nine gallons to that delivery takes next to no time. Your biggest cost is getting that driver in the truck to the home or to the business that you're making the delivery to. If you can put off every incremental gallon that you can put into that tank while you're already there, because essentially um, you can almost think of it as no distribution cost attached to those incremental gallons. But if you if you do the averages and you get up to the 192, uh, which is common with a very large client that we have, you've now reduced your delivery cost by 27 percent. 27 percent. I mean, your your fleet operations. If you look at your operating statement, your income statement. Um, I mean, that's your largest operating expense is is, is your fleet. So if you can reduce 27 percent of that cost, wow your accountant's going to love you. This 2207.5, this is our client with the, uh, with the highest average delivery cost. He's actually reducing his, his fleet costs by one-third. He's taking one-third of that cost out, taking his highest expense item on his statement and cutting it by a third. It's huge. Let me go back and let me make one other point. Typically, most, most of our clients will add online as an option for their customers. So it becomes part of their whole business. You know, so if they, were, if they, were, if they had full service, they still have full service. If they, the, if they, if they um, um, also had a COD will call um, percentage to their business, which most companies typically have today, they still do that and deal with customers um, you know, by phone if the customer wants to do that. Remember, the customer is going to self-determine how they want to be served. So you don't want to change people. You want to serve them the way that they want. Um, so with online, what they wind up doing is they, is they wind up typically adding new customers. 
when you add new customers into the business, the other dynamic that takes place, assuming that you're not expanding your delivery, tour, delivery territory, is you're increasing your delivery density, so you have more customers in the same geography, which ultimately is also lowering the cost for what we refer to as your core business, you know, your traditional full service business. Um, or your traditional uh, uh, COD or will call business by phone. It lowers that part of your, your cost for that part of the operations as well when you, when you add your online segment. All right, so we just talked about, we just talked about all those. Um, accounts receivable, bad debt. Um, we deal with a, uh, uh, with a number of people that are in the business of mergers and acquisitions. And, and some of you, I'm sure, know some of these people by name and maybe have worked with them uh, over the years that, uh, you know, help people in the industry buy and sell businesses. And I was talking with one of them um, just a number of weeks ago, and I, and I said to him, I said, hey, how many of the transactions do you do? How many of the companies still have, you know, AR as part of that transaction? He looked at me kind of funny, and he said, John, he said, every one of them. And, and I said, really? I said, uh, you know, I talked with companies, and, and they said, yeah, we're, we've really made a conscious effort to get rid of our accounts receivable. We're making everybody go to credit cards. And he said, yeah, he said, some of the companies are making some progress. He said, but it's nowhere near the progress that they'd like to have. Accounts receivable is still a big, big burden on most businesses. Um, uh, so if you can reduce that accounts receivable, um, you are in fact accomplishing something for your business. In the in the um, the online world, with a full function e-commerce platform, you're actually dealing with no no receivables, absolutely no receivables, nothing. You have no bad checks that you're working with. Again, as long as you follow our guidelines, you have zero bad debt, nothing that you're writing off at the end of the year. And, and, and consequently, you've eliminated that problem, one of them that we, uh, that we talked about up front. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's pretty compelling. Just think about you know, eliminating all of that part of your operation and that headache from your business. All right, well, when, you, when we're thinking about uh, doing business online, what about customer service? Um, you really want to avoid adding cost. Um, uh, and, and we see some companies um, that, that will attempt to or start to do some things online and you know, maybe they'll put a, 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 a page on their website that says, hey, you want to you place an online order and it gives them a, a form to fill out, how many gallons do you want and so forth. Um, we see some kind of crazy and unsecure things going on with, along with that as well. So you, you certainly don't want to get involved in that. But the key point here is, you know, you don't want to increase costs. Many of those forms uh, then are simply emailed to a customer service representative who then has to call the customer and get their payment method, because certainly you don't want to take a credit card on a form like that, um, um, you know, even if it is a, a, a secure page. You just don't want to do that. I mean, your credit card company, if they know that you're going to do that, is going to ding you for that. That's not PCI compliant. Um, but in that particular case, you have a company that's attempting to go online, but they're actually increasing their customer service costs rather than reducing their customer service costs. So however you wind up going online, one of the things that you want to um, yeah, make sure that you don't do is you don't want to add costs where you don't have to. You do, in fact, want to reduce your expenses. Um, and the other thing you, you don't want to do is make the customer go crazy. Um, because the customer, if the customer goes crazy, they're going to say, hey, you're too much trouble to deal with. So think about that customer that, that, that goes online to a form and fills it out, and they say, we'll be back in touch with you to get your credit card information. Then they have to have two interactions with the, with the customer. You've actually made it less convenient for them um, as well. So we see, we see some, some, some uh, companies making noble efforts to really engage the customer online, but you need to be smart in terms of how you do it. Make sure that you're not increasing your costs and you're not agitating your customer either. All right. Um, this is another this is another area that that uh, that we don't have time for in this webinar, but I'll just say this: 
One of the things that we found over the years and actually came as a very big surprise to us, we never anticipated it when we first started engaging with customers online, is you have the ability to build stronger relationships. I'll say that again. Stronger relationships with those customers than you can in your traditional business, whether or not you're talking about full service customers or we'll call our COD customers. Um, if you're interested about that, I, I, I can be glad to share a lot of information for you. It's really one of the very exciting things about engaging with a customer online. You have to do it properly, of course, but being able to, to have that customer um, build a strong relationship with you. One of the other things that I'll, that I'll say is um, and this is actually new information. Um, when we first did this webinar and we were preparing for it a few weeks ago, um, I actually wound up drilling down on, on, on uh, some, some um, just dealer information. And quite honestly, I was surprised um, at, at what I found here. Uh, but it really points out that beating your competition is relatively easy. Okay? Let's this is a sampling. This is actually a, a group of companies in Massachusetts, and I happened to pick this particular uh, region because it had a, a pretty good number of companies, and I wanted to get a, at least a reasonable size sample. Here's what I found about the companies in this area. Only 78% of them had a website. Okay, now I was shocked because Adrian and I actually did um, these numbers, and it has to be like eight years ago, Adrian, I think that we did this. And, and you know, in, in, um, in work that we've done since then, we've said, um, you know, hey, back then there were 12% there were of heating oil companies that didn't have a website at that point. My God, at least based upon this app, we're still 12% that don't even have a website that customers can access. Only 44% of them have price transparency. You know, one of the things that the Internet has changed, and part of that self-determination with uh, customers, is customers want to educate themselves. It's the number one thing that they use the Internet for is the, to, to educate themselves. Um, and price transparency is part of that. I mean, they can, if, you know, if they're, if they're savvy enough online, believe me, they can find out what you put, paid for your oil yesterday um, online. Uh, so certainly they, they want to know, um, you know, what it is that you are, um, what you're charging for oil today, and you shouldn't be afraid of doing that. You know, when we first started doing it, it was new for us too. Um, you know, the customers can call up and they're going to find out where you're selling oil for. If you're still selling, a, sending a salesperson out to them, and the customer's going to let them into their the home, they're going to find out anyway. So, what are you what are you hiding? Um, uh, customers expect transparency today. Amazon would not exist today if it wasn't for price transparency. Uh, but only 44 percent of this sample of customers offer price transparency. Only 12% of them offer a guaranteed price, meaning that if that customer places an order on the price that that company is quoting today, only 12% of them will guarantee that they'll deliver that order at that price. Damn, man, if I was buying on Amazon and, uh, you know, in that $99 purchase, um, you know, Amazon could change the price before from the time I placed the order until I so they, it got to my home, would I make that purchase? Probably not. But we're trying to do that in the heating oil industry. We found 37% of the people that were trying to do anything online within this group were actually doing it on an unsecure form, meaning they were asking people to divulge personal information to them on a form that was not secure on the Internet. That's a, um, uh, that's a formula for, for disaster um, at some point. Only 22% accepted credit cards. And of this sample, 0% of them used a full function e-commerce solution. So, you know, if your market looks like that, um, actually, um, you know, competing with companies uh, like that makes your job, you know, pretty darn easy. It doesn't take a lot um, of know-how, and it really doesn't take a lot of money to be able to do it. So, as we wrap up today, Three key takeaways um, that we want we want to leave you with. You know, first of all, there is a lot of life left in this business. 
if you're in the heating oil, you're in the propane business, certainly if you're in the commercial fuels business, there's a lot of life left in. This business is going to be going on long after um, all of us are gone that are on this call this morning. Um, we can, in fact, um, uh, make the business fun. Um, we've got uh, just coming up on 15 years now worth of, worth of a lot of data that says e-commerce is, is extremely viable for this industry, um, done well. And it may, in fact, matter of fact, I believe that it is because nobody has been able to show me anything that is easier and less expensive to be able to grow your business today. And I'd love to talk with you know, some of you more about that. Takeaway number two, you need to be better than your competition. Um, and I mean, you really need to be better than your competition. You need to be better than your competition from, your, from the customer's perspective. So you need to be able to engage with them the way that the customer wants to interact with you. You also need to be good in terms of your operations. Um, you need to be making more efficient deliveries. You need to be lowering your order fulfillment costs. You need to be lowering your customer acquisition costs. We didn't even talk about that. Lowering customer acquisition costs. Um, online is the, the lowest customer acquisition cost that we've ever seen. Again, you, you need to know how to do it you know, properly. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, when the industry is still talking about numbers between $400 and $600 to acquire a customer all in, and you're talking about uh, costs online well under $100, it's, um, the economics are there. Um, we also, you also need to be good at consumer behavior and marketing. And quite honestly, uh, this is hard because most fuel dealers are not particularly good at it, then it's the exception where a fuel dealer even has anyone that's on the staff that has the title of marketing. Uh, but you need to you need to be good at this. One of the things that we do with our with our clients is we don't we don't do marketing ourselves for our clients, but we, we certainly provide we certainly provide a marketing roadmap, and then we have you know other other companies that do marketing and kind of do that that are also very familiar with our energy engine and how to do business online and familiar with the industry that, uh, that, that we regularly introduce to our clients because they're the experts on consumer behavior and marketing. And it's not expensive to use them. Uh, doing business online um, is much less expensive than traditional advertising, so you shouldn't be afraid of that at all. It's actually uh, very easy to get a positive return and to measure that return. Um, on that investment, and uh, we've done webinars on, on that point alone, the ROI on uh, um, uh, acquiring uh, online uh, fuel con uh, customers. And then takeaway number three, remember, and don't forget this because it's vital, it's the only way that you're going to su succeed is it is all about the customer. Um, you know, they're going to decide how they're going to do business with um, you know, don't try to force them to buy this particular bundle of products because that's the way that you have things set up. They want to disaggregate um, products and services, and they do that all the time. They really want to buy all the cart. Many of them are going to bundle. They're going to put their own bundle together, but they don't want to make the determination on how they do that. So um, just wrapping up, um, those problems that we started out um, back on the, uh, when we set our agenda. Um, it is being done today. Uh, we do have clients that are increasing their gallons by hundreds of thousands of gallons. Um, they're not only competing successfully in some cases, and particularly if they're following um, you know, some of our guidance uh, in markets, they're absolutely killing their competition, like the call that I got from one of our clients just a couple of days ago, who's all of a sudden waking up uh, the competitors that are left in his market because he's taking customers from them literally on a daily basis. He's not only saving existing customers, he's adding new without any AR, any bad debt, or any bad checks to talk about. He's increased his delivery, uh, his average drop size, so he's reduced his delivery cost. He's also increased his delivery or his um, uh, customer density. So he's uh, actually reducing his delivery cost in the, in the core part of the business as well. And because of the reductions in cost, he's also increasing his margins. 
So with that, I'm going to turn the webinar back to Adrian, and uh, we'll open up the floor to any questions, comments, or any other discussion that you'd like to have. Adrian? Great. Thanks, John. Um, first question is, is setting up e-commerce or a website expensive? Um, no, it's not. It, it, it's absolutely not expensive. Matter of fact, the um, um, you know I grew up and I've, I've I've been around you know for more than a few years in business and uh, um, I was I was certainly in business uh, before websites before I knew what the heck a website was or a URL or a domain or any of the things that we uh, we just know routinely today. Um, uh, so I was a traditional consumer packaged goods marketer, spending money on things like television and network radio and magazines and all sorts of things. The cost of advertising today is much lower than it was historically. The cost of setting up a website is less expensive than getting a, a few thousand brochures printed. Um, uh, the the cost of managing a website is something that somebody does in the office with a small amount of training. Um, so no, it's it's not expensive to set up. Um, even in terms of a full function platform like our um, energy engine, I mean we do it on a subscription basis where we we roll kind of everything into just one cost on an annual basis, which is only fifty nine hundred dollars. Um, where you get the entire platform, you get uh, all of the hosting, you get the, the website that's, that's done the way you want it to. The engine just kind of runs behind it and powers what it is that you want your customers to see. It's your rules, it's your business. As Adrian says to our clients, you determine how that goes. That, that $5,900 is uh, just think if you were, you were paying somebody to um, uh, to do some things, um, you know, for you. Even if you were, you know, paying them fifty thousand dollars a year, you you're kind of at the cost of, um, you know, one month's salary to be able to do it. Uh, so, you know, in terms of what we spend other money on and the effectiveness of, of being online, it's really very inexpensive. I think the break even on that is somewhere about two orders a week or somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's very very efficient way to engage with your customers. Okay, great. Um, next question is, do your clients inspect tanks before first delivery? How do they manage the access to a basement and still achieve savings on delivery cost? Okay, great question. Um, yeah, more jurisdictions um, um, on an ongoing basis, um, you know, first delivery tank inspections, um, you know, are uh, required or it's the, it's the, um, it's what the company does. Um, in the case of the energy engine, um, the energy engine is actually set up and is smart enough to know if a customer registers a, um, an outside tank or an in-ground tank um, where the customer does not have to be home for a first delivery tank inspection, uh, the system's smart enough to know that. If the customer does have a, base, a, a tank in their basement, um, then the customer is alerted on screen that the customer needs to be home for that uh, first delivery, why the tank inspection is being done, that it is you know, for, their, for their safety and for their security or whatever our clients want to tell them. But we would encourage them to, to spin that as a benefit for the customer. Certainly it is. Uh, so on that first delivery, um, you know, whether or not you're dealing with that customer um, on the phone, you're, it's a full service customer or it's an online customer, you still need to do that first delivery tank inspection. Um, and the technology makes it uh, easy for the customer to know why they're doing it, to expect a call if that's the process that you use to uh, make sure that somebody's going to be home when that delivery uh, is expected. Your driver makes the inspection the way they, they, they do and then they're done. Um, uh, that customer then, um, the way that you want to engage with that customer, you only do that, that first delivery tank inspection um, the first time. What you want to do is you want to deliver to that customer over and over and over again, just like you do your full service customers. And that's why you then want to engage with that customer and be interactive with them using the internet channel because that then gives them the convenience and what they're looking for in terms of engaging with a company online. So now you spread the cost of that uh, first delivery tank inspection um, over multiple, um, you know, deliveries. So 
Um, so depending upon how you look at it, it's, it's absolutely not an increased cost for any customer who needs to do that. Um, in this particular case, we drive as much cost out of it as we can by using the technology smartly to set the customer's expectations in terms of what needs to be done and help them uh, facilitate you doing the job. Okay. Is it too late in the season to begin the process of getting a website? You know, if you would have asked me that question 10 years ago, um, I would have said, um, yeah, if it was me, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably start doing this in, in April so that I'm ready to go in August and September. But then our clients have, have proven me wrong. Um, we have had clients uh, start in, um, I remember one of them notably because he's one of, the, one of our clients that actually does the highest volume on the entire network. He called, um, it, was, it was about the middle of February, and he said, John, he said, I heard you speak. He said, I want to do this. I'm now ready. And I need to be ready, and I don't remember the date, but it was like the, the, the end of the first week of March. Can you get us live by the end of the first week of March? Because what he had done, he had made some marketing commitments, and he needed to have the site live by then. Well, John didn't get them live. Adrian did. And, um, you know, so it doesn't take long to get the site up. But that, that, um, uh, that dealer today was, without a doubt, the fastest start and continues to be um, the fastest growth in terms of absolute numbers, not in terms of percentages any longer because he's got such a customer base, but in terms of absolute numbers, continues to lead our, our client network. Um, I can also think about the, um, uh, the dealer last year in terms of our first year dealers because we have a tendency to look at our network. We break it out a couple of different ways. But you know the companies that are their first year using the energy engine or using e-commerce compared to those that have been on it more than one year, because um, our first year is pretty critical. And our dealer that actually was our best performing dealer last heating season didn't start until January. So, um, so my answer is um, no. It's not. It's not too late. Um, um, Any time you know, is a good time, and, uh, and that's, that's not me speaking, it's the experience of our clients that convinced me that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be during the summer or preseason to start the business. You can absolutely do it any time. Okay, great. Well, that's it for the questions, so I want to thank you, John, and thank you to our attendees for taking the time for this webinar. I will be sending out an email with instructions should you need to contact us for anything else, but as I said, thank you, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Thanks.